Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video on the table, and this kind of stems from an old, uh, old series that I wanted to start that I kind of forgot about. Um, that kind of falls under like a day in the life. Um, there was a whole YouTube channel that was going to be made around it called A Dave in the Life because my name's Dave and we wanted to pun it. But that hasn't happened yet, so I'm putting those videos on here and. I've also noticed on other channels that story time videos, quote unquote, as I like to call them, do really well as well. And I kind of wanted to start some of those where I talk about my previous experience with like getting fired from stupid jobs and things of that nature. And I wanted to start this series back up because I think I've done one other video in the past. I wanted to start this series back up with a story of what happened to me recently on November 13th, which was a Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th is a very bad luck day for me when I wake up and realize it's Friday the 13th. I always have bad luck on Friday the 13th. It doesn't matter what I do. I don't understand why either. But uh, what basically ended up happening was on Friday the 13th, I woke up to get ready for work, just like always, but found out that my friend that I work with um, didn't have to go into work that day. So that kind of threw me off because I'm a very habit formed person. If, uh, I'm going to be doing something, um, and it's an everyday thing, it really throws me off when I suddenly don't have to do it. I actually accepting change in my life and like change to plans and stuff like that. I actually used to have to even go to counseling for that. I had a psychologist for years because of it. And that's actually how we also found out I'm autistic, uh, diagnosed autistic, which, you know, wonderful, ain't it? As if I can't have any other problems in my life. So let's just get into it. I'm going to, whenever I make these videos, I'll probably do them with a Minecraft background and we'll explore the world that is spawned from the story. So today's seed is going to be losing my job Friday 13th. That's today's seed for this video, and I feel like this is going to be a really fun way to see uh, what happens, uh, what what my life generates in Minecraft. This is on the newest snapshot as well, by the way. So let's get right into it. Let's create the world. So a little bit of background before we get into this. There was a company we were working with. I'm leaving names and company names and stuff like that out of this. I'm just going to use like shorthand, like a... Uh, for example, with this company, what in the hell? Oh, I was in F5. I'm on the wrong account. Anyway, so with this, uh, with this company, um, they were an SEO company. They actually had offered to host our website completely for free, take over our search engine optimization, and automate some of our social media interaction in order to help us grow. Um, the SEO company, we actually fired them four days before the incident of Friday the 13th, uh, when I, where, where this is going, happened, um, due to them not being able to simply restore the website from a backup on their own servers, and they also weren't giving us enough access to do it ourselves. No FTP account to use, and no database information, so I couldn't restore it myself either. They offered to host the website for free. It was more of a pain in the ass than, a, than anything else. Um, by the way, this is probably my first video ever that I actually have like a script written for because the way this goes a little bit, of look ahead away, this goes, I feel like it's a really good idea for me to actually have a backup that I typed about everything that happened within the two days. Yeah. Two days. Good Lord. I think it's a really good idea for me to have this. I typed up the Friday the 13th part of this, uh, the day it happened, uh, like that night or the very early in the next morning. And then with everything else that happened, I added onto that right, just right now. And I thought it could be a cool idea to make a video out of it. So, um, what ended up happening and let's, let's, let's browse around this seat a little bit. So, this all kind of started when we moved the website back in-house with me still designing it. I had designed the website personally from the ground up. Um, 
prior to trying to give it to the SEO company to use, but they couldn't restore the backup for some reason. Even though I gave them uh, very well-written instructions on how to restore the backup, and these instructions, honestly, I believe a 10-year-old could have followed them. Like, I showed the instructions to my girlfriend and one of my other friends that's not very computer savvy. They both understood it. They both understood that this would be a, these were great instructions that could have been followed by anybody and they should have been able to restore the website no problem as long as they at least knew how to get the database information. That's all they needed to know. So I'll continue. Uh, both my bosses had been constantly, you know, saying to me, uh, we trust you. We have more confidence in yourself. You're getting compliments from some really amazing people who get paid quadruple what you do for doing the same web designing style stuff. Uh, you know, I have personally, I've always had a confidence issue. I can't really help that. Uh, everybody has their thing that they're kind of iffy about, you know. I personally, it's just a self-confidence issue. It's a normal thing, especially being autistic. Like, it really doesn't help because I really just don't think quite the same way as like a normal person if you actually understand how autism works and don't just use it as a stupid insult, uh, which is really dumb. Autistic people are very smart, but this isn't a video about how autistic people are treated. <laughs> this is a video about what happened to me at work. Ooh, I wonder what you got cooking. Absolutely nothing. Why are you staring at it then? So anyway, um... I figured that there was some level of trust in me and my knowledge, as well as the fact that they'd constantly been saying things to me also, like, educate us if we are misunderstanding something when it comes to technology. You're basically the guru. That's why we hired you. Teach us when we need teaching. Um, tell us, you know, what we're misunderstanding. Tell us this, that, and the other, and educate us properly, and, you know, this, that, and the other. That's basically what they were doing and or what they wanted me to do. And that's what I had been doing the whole time I'd been working there. We we had we all had a very fun, relaxed way of working um, when there because we were always passing jokes back and forth. You know, nothing mean, nothing bad. Just jokes, you know, that's it. And it was actually, it was kind of a ton of fun. And, you know, I don't think anything really got mean. Nothing that was said was usually actually like meant to be mean and things like that. But, you know, we were having fun. And that was the whole point in the way they wanted to run this company was just make it fun. So that's what we were all trying to do. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I tried to do on the 13th is educate somebody who is misunderstanding something. So we were discussing the SEO operations of a website in general and how our website personally was set up to get better traffic flow to it. The way I personally set up the navigation menus on the website was exactly as instructed by, instructed by someone I trust. Uh, they make websites for a living. They are, they have had several websites they've made, probably well over a hundred websites actually they've made for clients that have gone on to be very successful websites that get hundreds of thousands of hits every single day. I'm going to trust that guy over some old man sitting in an office chair who, okay, we're going to get to that. <laughs> we're going to get to that. I'm not spoiling anything. Um, but you get my drift. So I'm going to trust my friend who's made all these websites way more than I'm going to, you know, trust a company A that we fired and B um, that, you know, doesn't actually know anything about tech. Uh, he told me that, yes, the way I have my menu set up is well optimized. The way it runs, I, it shouldn't be changed. If anybody tells me to change it, I should educate them as to why not to change it. So the old guy wanted it changed. And by the way, the reason I'm saying old guy or like old man or young guy or the company is because I'm not giving out any information. I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful by saying eh, this old fart, you know, I'm not being that way. I'm 
saying it simply so I don't use names. And it's easier that way because old man is twice my age. I'm nearly 30. He's over 60. He's twice my age. So that's why it's easier to say old man, young man, my friend. And SEO company and the company for the actual place that I was. So the old guy decided to uh, do a Google search. I didn't even realize I was paused because I'm looking at my other screen for this. The old guy decided to do a Google search and prove me wrong because everything on Google is apparently true as far as, you know, I was always taught. You know, it's not. But, uh, and he found a website to read up on how menus work with search engine optimization. Um, and there was a sentence he decided to pick out from an entire article on the page. And he stated, look, read this. It agrees with me. You're wrong. Meaning I was wrong. Uh, but he was actually just misinterpreting what he was reading and still siding with the SEO company that we had fired. Uh, saying I was wrong. And I know I'm not wrong. Like I was told by somebody with, you know, a few over a hundred successful websites that get hundreds of thousands of hits every day. I gotta scroll down. So again, I tried to calmly explain what S I tried to calmly explain basically what SEO company said wouldn't make sense. This is how I was told to do it by someone else who does it for a living due to how I set up our menu system for the site. Google and other search engines don't care and pages will get the same or worse hits if I change it to how you want me to have it. So, you know, and that's the truth. Let's look around underground. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, and that's exactly what ended up happening. And I said, you know, and uh, the old guy still wanted it changed. And, you know, I'm a very smart ass person. I kind of can't help it. It's just like ingrained in my blood that I'm going to be a smart ass. Uh, it, it happens more often than it should. And, you know, I'm not proud of it, but if I'm being honest, like it happens a lot. So I can't really help it. It's just who I am. When I know I'm right and someone continues to tell me I'm wrong, there are times where I admittedly, I will just straight black out for a second and say something and then come back to reality and realize I need to remove myself from the situation. A normal person, that removal from the situation would happen prior to saying something stupid or smart assy. For me, it's backwards. I say the stupid thing and then I remove myself from the situation. So that's exactly what happened. And I said something along the lines of, well, if you believe SEO company is right and you're right, you change it yourself. You can barely navigate a website, though. So good luck. And I walked out of the room. Uh, it, it, maybe not the best thing for me to say. Maybe not the best thing at all for me to say, actually. But it was said. And uh, like I've said, I'm the type of person that I don't see a point in trying to take that back because... Well, it was said. There's nothing I can really do about it. So um, I walked into our tech room where my laptop and everything was, started unplugging it, cleaning my desk, and I was just going to leave. I was going to leave the shop and just never come back because that's just what I felt like the right move to do was. I, you know, I was not getting away with what I said. I didn't expect myself to get away with what I just said. And I didn't want to try to get away with what I just said. I wanted to remove myself from the situation. It was the right thing to do. Um, I walked into my office, started unplugging everything, cleaning my desk, getting ready to leave. I felt kind of betrayed, too, because I was taught by these guys themselves uh, to stand up for what I believe in, especially when I know I'm right. Stand up for myself and argue back. That's what they told me to do. This was kind of a mess on both sides. It was kind of created by both sides because for once I knew I was right and I was doing what they taught me. I was taught by them to stand up for myself when I know I'm right. And, well, <laughs> you know, I'm also the type of uh, person that doesn't generally apologize. And we'll get into that. 
So, I heard silence from the old man's office. And after about a minute or two, he comes into the tech room where I'm cleaning up my stealth stuff nice and calmly. You know, I'm having a conversation with Andrew, just being like, look, it was nice working with you and just packing up my stuff, um, sanitizing my desk because COVID. I wasn't going to make somebody else do it. That's, you know, not right. Um, but, you know, whatever. And uh, the the old man comes walking into the tech room and he's shaking with anger. You know somebody's mad when they are shaking. Their hands are shaking. They look just really shaky and you can hear it in their voice. Their voice is shaky and their voice gets really low and either they sound really calm or they just sound very agitated. There's two types of angry. If I get very calm when I'm angry, you know there's a problem. Um, but that's kind of also how this guy got. He sounded kind of calm, but there was the shakiness in his voice. When I get that mad, there's no shakiness in my voice. I just suddenly sound like there's nothing wrong. And that's when you need to be scared. So he comes into our office and he says something along the lines of, I pay you, you work for me. So you're going to do two things right now. One, you're going to apologize for being disrespectful. And two, do exactly what I said to the website and change it. I admittedly just ignored him and kept cleaning um, because that's, you know, that was my goal at the moment was just clean up my office and get out because I didn't want to be there anymore. I, uh, I'm the type of person I don't believe in, you know, apologizing for things said because if it was said, when I say something, I generally mean it as long as I'm, you know, sober. If I'm drunk, you know, I usually can't really say if I said something stupid because drunk minds don't always speak sober thoughts. I don't believe in that saying, but I'll apologize for things like if I physically break something, I'll ap apologize for breaking it. If I, you know, accidentally eat some food that was my girlfriend's in the fridge and I didn't realize she wanted it that night, I'll apologize for it. Or if I threw away food that I thought was bad and moldy in the fridge, but it actually wasn't, I'll apologize for it and go buy it again. Uh, things of that, things like that, physical things I'll apologize for. Words I do not believe you can actually apologize for. The damage is always going to be there whether you say you're sorry or not, especially only five minutes later. So, he didn't like being ignored and you could see that. And suddenly all I heard from behind me was Dave, did you hear me? I turned around and calmly said something along the lines of old man, you trusted me and taught me to stand up for myself when I'm right. I'm doing that now. And suddenly you don't like it. I'm packing my things to leave. Well, he didn't like that response very much and got very angry as I turned away from him again to continue cleaning my area and packing my stuff up. He really didn't like that response. Uh, <laughs> um, suddenly I start hearing that really heavy breathing of somebody who is super just crazy angry. You know, when they scrunch up their nose and they're breathing very heavily through their nose and it sounds like they're just about to constantly blow their nose every time they exhale. It was that kind of breathing. Um, I heard that from behind me. And, you know, I turned around and looked at him and he was so mad that like, you also know when somebody is crazy mad, they just suddenly start sweating profusely. He was sweating. He was very mad. And, you know, oh, well, you know, I said what I said. I can't, I'm not the type of person that's going to apologize for it. And, um, he points at me and takes one step forward and says something along the lines of, if this was 15 years ago, I'd rip your fucking head off. You're lucky if I don't. Get the fuck out of my business. I stood there and kind of smiled in a sort of smart-ass way because I knew he wasn't actually... I'd, at least I was under the assumption that he wasn't going to actually touch me. Uh, and then I turned around to pick up my stuff. Suddenly I hear another step forward towards me, and I also hear several steps really quickly from the young guy that I worked with, uh, who was the other owner 
of the place. He was more tech savvy than the old man, but also more understanding. And suddenly he stepped in. Both these guys played football in the past. They knew how to, you know, they know how to control a person and how to push them out of the way when they are unwilling to be pushed. They know how to get somebody, you know, out of there. So old man is yelling and screaming and more threats and stuff like that. Stuff like, you know, get the hell out of my business. Get the fuck out of my business. I'll I'll rip your fucking head off. You know, he's yelling more things as he's getting pushed out of the office, trying to get away from the young guy. So, you know, crazy, right? And the young guy does get him pretty much all the way out of the office, tells him to go outside and cool off his damn head. And, uh, you know, he, uh, wait, did I just scroll up? Hold on. Oh yeah. And, you know, pushes him outside. And I, I do personally firmly believe that the whole thing that he said of 15 years ago, I would have ripped your fucking head off was more like 15 seconds into the future. And he was going to rip my fucking head off. If the young guy hadn't stepped in old guys, twice my age, this is incredibly immature of him. It's incredibly stupid that he even reacted this way at all period at all. There's no reason for him to react the way he reacted. Um, so young guy comes back in, we exchange some words, nothing mean, nothing bad, nothing insulting. We agree to calmly part ways. You know, there's no ill, there's no bad blood between me and the ba- uh, young guy. You know, I'm still, we're still friendly. You know, we just realized that working together wasn't going to work. Uh, and I have a firm belief that as long as, as long as I almost said his name, <laughs> As long as the old guy is a part of the company, that company is going to fail. I'm, I completely believe that 100%. So it is what it is when it comes to that, but this isn't over. Like I know we're 22 minutes into this. It isn't over. This is stupid how this was going down. So, um, but yeah, we exchange, you know, Nice words, and we both agree that things on both sides were out of hand in some ways. That, you know, some things shouldn't have said been said on one side or the other. You know, both people, you know, me and the old guy, we both reacted in ways that we shouldn't have. But there were also truths on both sides. We both agreed. Um, and the old guy comes back in just before I'm about to leave. He's grumbling and being, you know, kind of all high and mighty about himself. Uh, basically grumbling things like, you don't know anything. I've closed million dollar deals, made hundreds of thousands of dollars in my life, achieved many amazing things in my working life. You don't know anything. You're too young to even understand. I don't think this guy realizes I'm 30 goddamn years old. Um, (laughs) it's ridiculous. So it's really kind of high and mighty of him. Uh, Just before I leave, you know, I look the young guy straight in the face and I say it just loud enough for the old guy to hear in his office. Um, I'm just being the bigger man and leaving calmly. I'm not blowing this out of proportion. Someone else here is. And I turned around and I left. Although I'll admit when I got to the door, I yelled one of my favorite memes from Joe Sanagato. A uh, very old people of Walmart video. Very old. He says one sentence in the video that just for some odd reason gets me every single time. He yells, way to go, dickhead. And just, you just walk out the door. If I can find that clip, I'll try to like edit and edit that into this, but I don't think I'll be able to. So, you know, I left and that was the end of Friday the 13th. But I'm going to make this a two-parter. This is a 24 minute video. That was Friday the 13th. We still need to talk about Friday the four or Saturday the fourteenth. I'm gonna make this a two parter. So tune in for, you know, the second part of this because I think it's a cool idea also to make this a two parter for the start of a series. And then, you know, we'll move on to there to mostly single part episodes, except for like big milestones like episode ten, episode twenty. You know, every ten episodes it'll be something that's a two parter. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are excited for part two because this gets crazy. I mean, yeah, it's already crazy because I had a 
six foot five, 300 pound old man over 60 years old threatening to come after me, both physically and with words. I'll talk to you guys about part two, or I'll talk to you guys in part two of this because it's not over. This is 25 minutes long. Let's make this a two-parter. I'll talk to you guys later.